All right, here are the recording in progress. So start sharing the screen here. All right, so gonna finish up 7.1 today. I was done with most of it yesterday, so I'll do some more integration by parts and maybe sneak in a little bit of 7.2. All right, so that's where we are. Next quiz is this coming Friday on 7.1 and 7.2 material. So you've already seen a couple of quizzes now, so you know the way to work. Um, once I give it to you, you have the rest of the day to work on it, open everything. So 11.59 p.m. officially on Friday is when the quiz is due. And so again, it looks like a two days for a section, two days for 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, .4, and so on. And then uh, the next exam is on the 24th of September. And here's where we are homework wise. All right, so let's continue on with more integration by parts problems. Okay, a very interesting one is number 17, a little bit harder. You can look at something in the book really quickly. Okay, so we have integral of e to the two theta, sine of three theta, d theta. <clears throat> now, before we said, whenever we have a polynomial, let's say 23, which I'll show you later, polynomial and a trig function, let u be the polynomial. Or if I had an exponential also, x e to the x, let x be the u part. Okay, what if I have an exponential and a trig function, e to the two theta, sine of three theta, d theta. So this one's harder, okay? It turns out it doesn't matter which one you let be the u and the other be the dv, okay? So for this one, let's let u be the exponential and the dv be the trig part. So u equals e to two theta, dv equals sine of three theta, d theta. Okay, remember the way the game works is differentiate here, integrate here. So differentiate, the derivative e to two theta is e to two theta times two. So du equals two e to two theta d theta. Integrate here. Integral of sine is negative cosine. And then again, the chain root in reverse. If I got to this stage and I asked for the derivative, I'd multiply by three. So therefore when I integrate, I multiply by one third. So negative one third cosine of three theta. And double check if you go backwards and differentiate, the derivative of this is this, is it not? If you start off with V equals negative one third cosine three theta, if you go up, I suppose, DV would be sine of three theta d theta. Because <clears throat> the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine, right? So positive sine three theta, and then by the chain root times derivative of three theta, which is three, and that three knocks out that one third, so it does work, okay? <clears throat> Little double checks. When you're right here, there's no D, no D, D, and D. Here, you start off with D and D, and you end up with no D and no D. Okay, so this statement here should not have a D. This should not have a D. Both of these should have Ds. D, U, D theta, D, V, D theta, and so on. All right, so I is U, V by formula. U times V, that times that, so negative one third, e to two theta, cosine three theta, minus the integral of v du. So that times that, there's a two times a negative one third, so negative two thirds, e to two theta, cosine three theta, d theta. Okay, or I rewrite it as this, leave that alone, take out the two thirds, e to two theta, cosine three theta, d theta. Okay, let's look at what we started off with. We had exponential trig, sine. I now have exponential cosine, it didn't really get any better. It didn't really get any worse. <clears throat> so we'll just do it again. I'm gonna call this I1. In other words, I, I stands for the original integral, negative one third e to two theta cosine three theta plus two thirds I1. Okay, so I take a timeout, figure out I1, which is integral of e to two theta cosine three theta d theta. And then once I get that, I'll stick it back right over here. So I1, is this e to two theta cosine three theta d theta. So integrate by parts again, <clears throat> u equals e to two theta 
dv is cosine three theta d theta, differentiate, integrate. So the derivative of e to two theta is two e to two theta, we know that. Integrate, v is one third sine three theta. Again, chain rule and reverse. <laughs> so the integral of the cosine is a sine. Careful, not negative sine, just sine. And then by the chain rule. So if I think to myself, if I got to this stage and I differentiate, uh, multiply by three. Therefore, I want to integrate, I divide by three or multiply by one third. Okay. And again, to double check that, take the derivative of this is not the derivative of this, this, right? How would you differentiate one third sine of three theta? You would go one third cosine three theta times three. And that three knocks out the one third, so it works. All right, so I1 is u times v by formula, uv, one third e to two theta, two theta sine three theta, minus the integral of v du, so that times that, two times one third, two thirds, e to two theta sine of three theta d theta, and I got back my original, the original i, e to two theta sine three theta d theta, so clearly, I'm not going to keep integrating my parts. I'm just going to go in a circle here. Okay. So look at the progression. What happened? I started off with exponential and sine. Integrate my parts once. I got exponential cosine. Do it again. I got exponential and sine. Okay. You might think that there's nothing to do, but there actually is. Okay. You don't keep integrating by parts. The whole idea is when you plug back in, label this as I. This is the same as the original integral, right? I. So again, my definition of I is always the original integral. Okay? That's not everyone's convention. That's my own hang up. I mean, it saves you from writing the original all over again. I just call it I. Okay, so in other words, I1 is one third e to two theta sine of three theta minus two thirds of that. And that is just I. Take this whole thing, plug it back in right here. So I, take a look, I is negative one third e to two theta cosine three theta. I can barely show you both. Okay, so take a look at my two pens right here. So the original I is negative one third e to two theta cosine three theta plus two thirds I one. And now for I one, I plug in this mess. So two thirds, everything in parentheses, I one. One third e to two theta sine of three theta minus two thirds I, the original I cycled back. Okay. And now take a look at this. This is a simple algebra equation that I will just solve for I. Okay. So just algebraically solve for I and that should not be that bad now. Okay, so that's the trick to doing this kind of problem. All right, so it looks like I distributed two thirds. So I is negative one third e to two theta cosine three theta plus, okay, this becomes two ninths e to two theta sine of three theta. And then two thirds times a negative two thirds is minus four ninths I. Add four ninths I to both sides. Remember I is the same as nine over nine I, the coefficient is one. And so I have nine over nine I plus four ninths I is 13 ninths I is equal to all this mess, negative one third e to two theta cosine three theta plus two ninths e to two theta sine of three theta. Okay. And so I have 13 ninths I multiply both sides by nine thirteenths and I finally have it. So I, the original integral is nine thirteenths. So I look at the coefficients, nine cancels to three, so negative three thirteenths e to two theta cosine three theta plus uh, these two coefficients, the nines cancel out two thirteenths e to two theta sine of three theta plus c. And that is my final answer. <clears throat> okay, so the thing tricky about this one is your first impression might be, oh, I give up, right? I integrate by parts. I started with e sine, integrate by parts once, e cosine, integrate by parts again. Oh, I got back e and sine. I'm just going in circles. Okay, no, you don't keep integrating by parts. Just go ahead and call this i the original I, and then you algebraically solve for I after that. Okay, so that was an unusual thing about that problem. A little bit trickier, problem 17. Okay. 
Okay, 11. We will go T to the fourth, Ellen T D T. Okay, and the game I want to play here is, or you should think to yourself also, in my integration by parts, and by the way, you say, how do you know to integrate by parts? Quite often it's when you have a product, something times something. But think about LN. Do you remember what's the derivative of LN T? One over T. What's the integral of LN T? Well, that was a little bit harder. I, I did show it to you. Uh, it was T LN T minus T. It's much more complicated. Okay, so remember we had a rule that if there's an LN involved, you'd rather differentiate LN. That means let that be the U. Let U be L and T, and DV is the rest. DV is T to the fourth DT. So a polynomial is easy to differentiate, easy to integrate, right? I don't mind taking the derivative of that. I don't mind integrating that. But when it comes to LN, right, I'd rather not integrate LN. I'd rather differentiate LN. So let U be L and T. DV is T to the fourth DT. I don't mind T to the fourth. That's easy to differentiate. That's easy to integrate. All right. Differentiate du equals one over t dt, and v integrate t to the fifth over five. All right, so my integral i is uv that times that, so one fifth t to the fifth ln t minus the integral of v du. So that times that is one fifth t to the fifth times one over t dt. And let's see, I take out the one fifth. T to the fifth times one over T is T to the fourth. So I leave this guy alone, one fifth T to the fifth LNT minus one over five integral of T to the fourth DT. So it came out nicer. The whole idea behind integration by parts is to transform the problem into an integral, which is easier. So I started off with T to the fourth LNT. Now I'm just integrating T to the fourth. Well, that's easy, right? So leave this alone, one fifth T to the fifth LNT minus one fifth. Integral of t to the fourth is again t to the fifth over five plus c. And just combine these so that's one over five times five, one over 25. So final answer is one fifth t to the fifth ln t minus one over 25 t to the fifth plus a constant. Okay, and that's the final answer. <clears throat> okay, so again, I highly suggest on your next cheat sheet for the next test on page 472, put this thing down. Again, in, in some sense, you should be happy we're under COVID. I, mean, I guess I'm guessing nobody's really happy under COVID, but the, the nice thing is I'm letting you write this on your cheat sheet. If we were meeting face-to-face, -face, I'd make you guys memorize it. But since we're not, they told us to make things a little easier on students, but that's my way of making things easier on students. You can put this on your cheat sheet, okay? And yeah, I showed you the other day also things like, if you have LN, you'd rather differentiate LN Right, but, but if you have a polynomial and a trig function or an exponential function, let you be the polynomial part. Okay, next one I'm gonna show you was 23, how to do a definite integral. It should not be that much harder, I think. So 23, and in case you're wondering, you might say, aren't these problems right off the homework? Yes, every one that I'm doing in class is one less that you have to do, right? I'm knocking off. This. So again, to me, it's really a joke to say you have to do 70% of the homework because I end up doing a high percentage. <laughs> Sometimes I literally do 70% or more of the homework. Yeah, I think last time 6.4, I almost literally did all the problems. <clears throat> and then the Thursday before the test, a lot of you asked for all the other ones. So we may have very well come close to almost doing all the problems. And same thing's happening now. I'm doing a whole bunch of problems from 7.1, right? So the 70% homework rule is really not that difficult. All right, definite integral. So how do you do a definite integral? Not that much different. Okay, x trig function. So what was our rule? Let u be the x and dv is the rest. So we have a polynomial and a trig function or a polynomial and an exponential. Let u be the polynomial part. All right, du equals dx. Now, anytime you see u equals x, then just immediately put a D on both sides. If I can coin a verb, D both sides, just put a D there and a D there, D equals DX. <clears throat> okay, V again, chain rule reverse. Integral of cosine, integral of cosine is sine. 
And then again, chain rule in reverse, if I were to differentiate from calc one, right here, I would multiply by pi. So what happens when I integrate? Multiply by one over pi. So V is one over pi sine of pi x. Double check, what's the derivative of this, right? You would go one over pi cosine pi x times pi by the chain rule. That pi knocks out the one over pi and you get this thing, so it works. Okay, so the original integral is uv, so that times that, one over pi x sine pi x. Oh, the tricky thing is it's a definite integral. So you should you know, straighten out the funny looking s, move it to the right side, zero to half. Minus the integral from zero to half of v du. So I copy that and then dx. And yeah, take out the pi at this stage. Okay, and let's look at what happened. I started off with x trig function. I ended up with just a trig function. Okay. Again, that typically is what happens when you have a polynomial and a trig function. When you integrate by parts the right way, the degree goes down by one. Okay. So if you start off with the, uh, x cubed, trig function, integrate by parts, it goes to x squared, trig function, do it again, x trig function, do it again, you just have trig function. So it gets depressed down by one, the exponent goes down by one every time you do integration of parts. <laughs> okay, so leave this alone, minus one over pi, and then I integrate sine pi x, that's negative cosine pi over x, and again, by the chain root times one over pi, which is a little inventory here. Negative one over pi is that. And then you say, where'd that other negative one over pi come from? That was from integrating sine of pi x. Integral of sine is negative cosine, and then just like the previous problem, by the chain root, I multiply by one over pi. That ends up being one over pi squared positive. So one over pi x sine pi x plus one over pi squared cosine pi x from zero to half. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. Plug in one half and plug in zero. So plug in one half. Let's see, one half there, that's one over two pi, sine of, put a half sine of pi over two, which is one, plus, if I plug in one half here, I'm taking a cosine of pi over two, which is zero. So this thing drops out. Minus, plug in zero, that's zero. Plug in zero here, cosine of pi is negative one. That's negative one over pi squared. Okay. So I have one over two pi minus one over pi squared. Common denominator is two pi squared. Multiply this by pi over pi. Multiply this by two over two. Final answer is pi minus two divided by two pi squared. Okay. All right. And then the last one I was gonna show you for this section was number nine, which is kind of a variation of the one I did yesterday except it was a definite integral. This is an indefinite integral, so that actually makes it a little bit easier. So all I have is inverse cosine. So let u be this, you don't really have any choice. <laughs> u is inverse cosine of x, dv is dx. The derivative of inverse cosine, you might recall, is negative one over radical one minus x squared dx, v equals x. If this is a quick shortcut. Anytime you see dv equals dx, just make it v equals x. So again, if I coin strange verbs, if you have u equals x, you d both sides. Just put d here, d u dx. Uh, this is anti d both sides. Just take off the d's. dv equals dx, erase the d's, and you have v equals x. All right, so i is uv, uv, x, inverse cosine x. Okay, you don't really mind how bad this comes out because you're not doing anything to it. You're not integrating it, you're not differentiating, you're just putting it. Minus the integral of v du, so that times that, negative one times x, negative x, over radical one minus x squared dx, double negative, right? So I get this, I leave this alone. So I'm gonna call this i1. So i is x, inverse cosine of x, plus i1. And that looks like a substitution that we said before. The derivative of one minus x squared is almost x. 
And by almost, I mean, you just have to multiply by a constant. <clears throat> so my original integral i is this, and then I take a little time out, figure out i1. Okay, so u equals one minus x squared. <clears throat> Don't include the square root. Okay, if you include the square root, you have to do the chain root. I'm gonna end up integrating radical u in the denominator. That's okay, that doesn't bother me. So one minus x squared du is, uh, should be a negative two x dx. Right? All right, so I put negative two inside. I think I botched this up a little bit. I have a sign problem here. Should be a negative there and a negative there. Right, so negative two x dx, negative a half outside, radical one minus x squared. Okay, so that's gonna become a negative. So negative two x dx, Negative here. That's my du over radical one minus x squared is radical u. So du over radical u becomes u to the negative half. So integral of u to the negative half is u to the positive a half. Divided by half means multiplied by two. And this should still be a negative here, which means this should be a negative here. Okay, so this is finally I1. That gets plugged way back in here. So final answer is X inverse cosine X. And I think this should now be a negative, sorry. X inverse cosine X minus radical one minus X squared plus C. And that should be it. Okay. All right, so I am now done with integration by parts, 7.1, I'm ready to start 7.2. So schedule wise, uh, I'm a little bit ahead by half a day. So I'll just sneak some in and we'll probably still in a little bit early. Okay, so 7.2 is now on quick integral. Okay, so I'm gonna metric integrals. So how do you integrate stuff with sines, cosines to certain powers and so forth, okay? So the assignment, one to 39 odd. Okay. Right, so 7.1, I did, you know, what, half the problems, two thirds of the problems. For homework, just copy it and review it when it comes to the test and do the few problems that we did not do. Okay. 7.2, one to 39. Okay, so let me try to get that to you now. Don't have the book, and I'm getting it. Page 484. Just focused here. Okay, that's everything up to 13, 15 to 29. Oh, it, it's good, it's all there. And then we had to go up to 39. So you should be able to see everything up to 39. Yeah, okay, that's it. All right, so 7.2, trig integrals. And ignore any dates here. So the first kind of trig integral we're gonna tackle is sine to some exponent cosine of some exponent dx, like sine to the fourth cosine squared or sine to the fifth cosine to the seventh. How do I tackle that? <clears throat> and by the way, either one of these could be missing. So in other words, it could only have cosine to something or it could have only sine to something. Like the first example that we gave us was sort of like that, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, on page 479, example one, cosine Q. How do you integrate cosine Q? Right. <clears throat> so that would be the case, if one of these is missing, then the M or the N would be zero, right? Because if you raise anything to the zero, it's one. So also falling under this category is 
stuff only having cosine raised to some exponent, or stuff only having sine, like sine squared, sine cubed, sine the fourth bit, how do you integrate those? Or only cosine squared, cubed, fourth, and so on. All right, so I'm gonna break it up into the easier and the harder cases. Okay, the easier case is if M or N is odd. It's a situation that we like better. Either this one is odd or this one is odd. And the logical or means they both can be odd. So if they're both odd, then easier case. <clears throat> so let's say that's a three, that's a five, I like it. Or two, five, <clears throat> or seven, four. At least one of them is odd. That's what it means by M or N is odd. <clears throat> the harder case would be the logical opposite of this. The logical opposite of M or N is odd would be they're both even. M, N, N are even. By the way, that still fits the category if one of these is zero. Zero is considered even. Okay. So I claim it's a harder integral if both of these are even. Like sine squared, cosine squared, that's tougher. Or sine of the fourth, cosine to the six. Or only cosine to the six, nothing else or only sine to the fourth. Those are much more difficult. If you have one of these exponents odd, that's nice, that's what you want. So just a, just a single sign. So that means it would be M is one and cosine to the third or fourth or fifth is it doesn't matter, that's gonna be okay, I can do that. At least one of these is odd. So three, three, I like it. Five, seven, I like it. Or 10, one, I like it. But I don't like 10 and two, four and four, two and eight, where they're both even. Okay, so that's a little bit harder. Obviously, we're gonna start with the easier case. Okay, so before moving on, we have to review a little bit of trig. <laughs> we call from trig sine squared data plus cosine squared data equals one. And again, this is one of the things, you know, do you want to put this on your cheat sheet? It's something you should already have memorized. You should have had that in your head ever since trig, and then you probably had it in pre-calc and you had it in calc one. But if you really need to put it on your cheat sheet, you may, but you should already have it memorized. Sine squared data plus cosine squared data equals one. <clears throat> so if I isolate the sine squared data, it looks like this, right? Subtract cosine squared on both sides. Sine squared data equals one minus cosine squared data. And similarly, if I isolate cosine squared data, subtract sine squared data over, cosine squared data equals one minus sine squared data, right? <laughs> right? So all three of these kind of represent the same equation, right? Variations of the same thing. All right, so we'll get our feet wet. I'll show you some of these problems right now, at least for a little while. And then when I decide we've had enough, then we'll just stop. Okay, question one. Integrate sine squared cosine cubed. So right now we're gonna do the easier case. One of these is odd. Sine squared X cosine cubed X. So is it true that one of these is odd? Yes, I have cosine cubed. If they're both odd, that's fine also. All right, so here's the way the game works. Cosine cubed, whichever one of these is odd, if they're both odd, it doesn't matter. Take one of the odd exponents, write it like this. So ignore the sine squared for the moment. Cosine Q, write it as an even exponent, cosine squared times another cosine X dx. Right. So do you agree this is still cosine Q right here? Cosine squared times cosine. <clears throat> right. And now the way the game works is everything here I separated out the cosine x. I can always do that when I have an odd exponent, right? Like cosine cubed, cosine to the fifth, whatever. Separate out a cosine x and then have an even exponent after that. So suppose this was cosine to the seven. I would make this cosine to the six times another cosine x. Okay. Now I'm gonna to try to make everything here, everything here to only say sine. Only one trig function, sine. If I can get all of that to say only sine, then I do a u substitution, let u be sine x, du is cosine x dx. So I want only sine. 
this is already sine. How do I change cosine squared x to sine? Well, I have these identities, right? So I leave this guy here alone, sine squared x, sine squared x. But cosine squared, I'm going to change it to 1 minus sine squared x. So do you agree this is the same thing as this, right? Sine squared x. Here's cosine squared x in the form of 1 minus sine squared x. I'll make that substitution. And now that's the way I want it. I have everything right here behind my finger only says sine. Sine squared, 1 minus sine squared. The only trig function is sine. So I'll do a u substitution. Let u be sine x. Du is cosine x dx. I'll be left with a polynomial, and polynomials are very easy to integrate. Okay, so one more time. <clears throat> Let's start it off here. <clears throat> sine squared cosine cube. Then I say, aha, odd exponent. So make it into even exponent, cosine squared, times another cosine. Right? So I claim these two are still cosine cubed, right? And the key idea was to get this to be cosine squared. Once I see cosine squared from up here, I change this to one minus sine squared. And now all of this only involves one trig function, sine x. Right? So u equals sine x, du equals cosine x dx. So now this stuff right here becomes my du. This becomes u squared times one minus u squared. And that's easy to do. Right. So distribute u squared minus u to the fourth du. And now the integration is easy. u cubed over three minus u to the fifth over five plus c. Remember for indefinite integrals, right? There's no numbers here and here. Your final answer is blah, blah, blah plus c. Okay, then just change u back to what it was. I usually like to write these as one third and one fifth. Technically, you don't have to, but it makes it easier to think in terms of the coefficient. So one third u was sine x, so sine cubed x minus one fifth sine fifth x plus c, final answer. Okay, so there we go. Okay, for illustration purposes, I wanted to show you number two. I know it's an even problem, but it brings home the concept again. Sine cubed cosine to the fourth. Okay. So again, either m or n is odd, and that's what we want. I have one odd exponent, so that's fine. <clears throat> so again, I take the odd exponent, sine cubed, break it into sine squared, times an extra sine, right? So these two here is my sine cube, and I leave the rest alone. Okay, now the name of the game is everything here that I have circled, I want only to be expressed in terms of cosine. I only want cosine here. Once I get cosine, blah, 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 then I'll do a u substitution that u be cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I need a negative one, but that's no big deal. So I want this to only say cosine. I've got a cosine to the fourth here. This has sine squared. Can I change this to cosine? Yes, because we know sine squared is one minus cosine squared, right? So here we go. Sine squared of theta is one minus cosine squared theta. Leave this alone, cosine to the fourth, sine of theta d theta. Okay. So everything right here only says cosine, whose derivative is almost the sine, S-I-N-E. Then I do my U substitution. U equals cosine theta. DU is negative sine theta d theta. So I need a negative one inside and a negative one outside. So now negative one sine theta d theta, negative one sine theta d theta is my du. Here's my substitution, one minus cosine squared theta, but cosine theta is u, so it's one minus u squared, that is that. And then cosine to the fourth becomes u to the fourth du. And there's a negative in front, but that's no big deal. Now this is just an easy polynomial. Okay, that's gonna become what? u to the fourth? minus u to the sixth. 
and there's still a negative in front, distribute the negative back in. We call it the negative of A minus B, you just turn them around, B minus A. So switch it back to U to the sixth minus U to the fourth. And there we go. Okay, that pretty much does it. So U to the seventh over seven minus U to the fifth over five plus C. Last step, change U back. What was U originally? Cosine theta. So one seventh cosine to the seventh theta minus one fifth cosine to the fifth theta plus C final answer. Okay, and let's see, number three is a definite integral. So let me show you what happens with a definite integral, but you still do the same thing. Okay, number three, <clears throat> still easier. Either M or N is odd. M is the exponent on the sign. N is the exponent on cosine. Here they're both odd. That's still easiest case scenario. So easiest case, one of them is odd, at least one. So problem number one, the N was odd, but the M was even. That's okay. Problem two is the other way around. The M is odd and the N is even. That's still good. And this problem, they're both odd. So the one that we don't like, the one that's the hardest is that they're both even. Okay, I'll have to show you what happens there. But here they're both odd, so that's good. So you actually have a choice. You can pick either one. So if you have choice, normally I take the smaller exponent. So cosine to the fifth, I make it cosine to the fourth times cosine. Okay, so now I want everything circled, stuff behind my finger to only say sine. Then I'll do a U substitution. U is sine theta, du is cosine theta, d theta. <clears throat> so how do we do that? I have cosine to the fourth. Well, cosine to the fourth, this cosine squared, squared, right? Cosine to the fourth theta, cosine squared theta, squared. And now I change cosine squared into one minus sine squared theta. So this is gonna be kind of messy, but it still works. So I have sine to the seventh, cosine squared, squared. And now I change cosine squared to one minus sine squared theta, quantity squared. So the object was to get all of this stuff so whatever is behind my finger can only say sine. The only trig function is sine. Then I do a U substitution. Let U be sine theta, to U is cosine theta, D theta. So now all of this stuff right here only says sine. It's gonna be a messy polynomial, but at least it's a polynomial. I like polynomials. Okay, so U equals sine of theta. DU equals cosine theta, D theta. This is a definite integral, which means I change the limits of integration. When theta goes from zero to power of the two, what happens to u? So I plug in. If theta is zero, plug in zero, sine of zero is zero, so u is zero. <coughs> theta is pi over two, sine of pi over two is one. So that means as theta goes from zero to pi over two, u goes from zero to one. And you can't get any better than that. Right, the easiest integrals are the ones that go from zero to one. Because we like plugging in zero and we like plugging in one. It's a little bit harder once you plug in 35 or something like that, right? Okay, so integral from zero to one. Sine to the seventh is now u to the seventh. One minus sine squared theta is one minus u squared squared du. So I have this polynomial now. I do have to multiply it out, but, you know, not completely clean, but. At least it's a polynomial. Okay, so u to the seventh, square this, one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth. Distribute u to the seventh minus two u to the ninth plus u to the eleventh. Okay, so there we go. u to the eighth over eight minus two u to the tenth over tenth plus u to the twelfth over twelve. Plug in zero, you get zero, 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 zero. Right? Zero to the eighth is zero, zero to the tenth is zero, zero to the twelfth is zero, zero minus zero plus zero, it's all zero. Plug in one, that's a one, that's a one, that's a one. So one eighth minus two tenths, which is one fifth plus one twelfth. Now it's just a messy arithmetic. Common denominator is 120. So multiply by 15 over 15, 24 over 24, 
10 over 10. Final answer, 1 over 120. And that takes me on that. Okay. All right, so that's as much as I'm going to show you today. So that's the easiest case is if you have at least one exponent that's odd. Okay. Much harder is something like seven. Even though it's only cosine squared, it's harder. You only have evens or cosine to the fourth or sine squared, cosine squared. Okay, so those are a little bit trickier. And then we get some later on that involves some others like tangent and secant. So I'll show you how to do those also. Okay. But for now, today we're doing the easier case of only sines and cosines where at least one of the exponents is odd. If one of these is odd, that's what we like. Okay. And it's harder if you have only evens. Okay, so I think I'm done for the day, folks. Let me stop the share and check the chat. And I don't see anything in the chat. All right, so does anybody have a question? Otherwise, we're done for the day. All right, I see nothing and hear nothing, so we're done. All right, folks, have a good day. And we'll see you next uh, time. Take care, Professor. All right, bye, everybody.